Welcome to this uh, Sunday evening encouragement session. Wow, we trust you're still doing well and you keep on following the Lord and you're encouraging your spirit. And uh, we're going to tonight specifically listen to Vilio uh, sharing his testimony on the Sunday evening. Let's be encouraged. Give us some feedback on what you're experiencing. Uh, there's a number that you can phone or WhatsApp if you have any challenges or prayer needs. We would love to pray with you and pray for you. Uh, because this is the time for the church to arise, for us to be strong in the faith, to grow, to be encouraged, uh, to be built up and rooted. So let's be the church and uh, let's listen to what Vilio has to say. Hello, Bride of Christ. My name is Vilio, and it's my privilege today to encourage you with my testimony. Or I at least hope that it would be an encouragement um, to all of us. I'd like to start by reading Ephesians chapter 2. And from verse 1 to verse 4, it reads the following. It says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of, your, of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, my story is, is probably like, the story of many people, um, many believers. I was definitely dead in my sins and the Lord made me alive, as the scripture says. So originally I'm from Namibia. So I grew up there, born and bred. And my grandfather was a pastor on my dad's side. So growing up, we had a sense of religiousness or a sense of traditional Christianity. And coming from Namibia, Statistically, the country is 90% Christian. So most people, if you'd ask them, they would tell you that they are Christian. But actually, I wasn't Christian at all. Because Jesus was more just a historical figure. Somebody that we referred to or that we knew existed at some point in history and was spoken about in this book, the Bible, which was very boring to read. Um, but never having a living relationship with him, never knowing him the same way we can know, for example, about a famous singer and not actually know them. Let's say, for example, Beyonce. You can see her picture on magazine covers and hear about her in news. And you, you know about her, but not knowing her because you've never sat with her. You've never shared a meal with her. So so was my, my life um, with re regards to relating to Jesus. But the change came about when moving to uh, a new school and a certain girl there, her parents were born again. So she began to speak to me about her parents and speak to me about how they are, they related to the Lord. And I always thought to myself, yeah, I'm also Christian, you know. But these people seem to be more like serious than, than I am or than my family is. Because in as much as I was confessing to be Christian, um, I was so bound still by my sin and so trapped in, in many different things. And even as a family, we still only went to church probably once every three months just to soothe our consciences. But actually, we never really had a relationship with God. We still trusted in very traditional things, ways of protecting ourselves, very spiritual things. And in that context, this girl spoke, speaks to me about her parents who would pray, who would seek the Lord, who I could see knew not only about Jesus or about God, but I actually knew him. So what that brought about in me was a hunger to to get to know him, to get to know who God is. And I remember at that stage being in grade, just about grade seven, and being very popular in school and being the sportsman of the year and having all these people, in a sense, look up to me. And it was almost my desire or goal to try and please people, to try and be compliant to people the whole time. And that had to change when this desire came to know God. So I remember 
very clearly staying away from my friend groups and everybody was wondering no what is this guy doing why are you so weird you know we used to do like a lot of things at school we used to rap we used to dance play sports but the more i spent time in the word i began to read proverbs especially everything else just seemed so relative or irrelevant and i remember in grade eight we moved i my brother and i moved to a new school and at the school somebody asked me are you born again because i was so quiet in class i would never speak to anybody ever and i'd only sp- spend the time reading my bible and i said no i'm not born again what does that mean you know um what weird term is that and then a few weeks later i read john chapter 3 and verse 3 which says truly i tell you unless a man is born again he will not inherit the kingdom of heaven it's jesus speaking to nicodemus and i'll never forget it because then at that moment i was like yo being born again is actually in the bible like what what do i do now because once you're confronted with the truth it demands a response and i sat on it for a few weeks until i came to the realization that i'm a sinner and that was a massive realization for me because growing up i always thought that i was compliant and i i thought i was a good kid because i always thought no i don't party you know i don't um, sleep around i don't deliberately disobey my parents but actually i was lost in my sin i was in deep deep darkness and thinking that i could save myself but in that moment the veil was torn and i realized that if heaven is real and if god is real i can't get to either one by myself in fact i remember thinking if i was god knowing my sinful nature my sinful heart and everything that i've done i wouldn't let myself into heaven and that's where the journey with the lord really began and that's when i decided to accept the lord and i remember having one of those small blue gideon's bibles and in my room opening it up and praying this prayer at the back and committing my life to the lord i prayed it a few times you know just to make sure um but from then my life really began to change i didn't go to church for two about two years i watched a lot of christian television in that time or that's mostly what i did i didn't really understand community and why community was important but shortly after that my aunt and my mom and my cousin also came to salvation so i began to witness to them in the house as a grade eight and yeah my sister also got saved that same year but she stayed in another country so between the two of us would encourage our family until my aunt my mom and my cousin came to salvation so now we were in the army and it was amazing but my dad was still not walking fully after the lord and that was for different reasons primarily that the veil wasn't torn and he was still trusting in different things and we prayed for him for a very long time like five years and i remember in my matric year very clearly him coming to the lord accepting the lord and it was such a taboo in namibia in in my community specifically to be in a charismatic or spiritual church and he joined church and it was amazing and just the power of god because i've seen a lot of things i've seen you know people get healed people get delivered but the most amazing thing is when somebody meets eye to eye with god and their whole life is transformed in front of you and i saw that in my dad and in my own life and it's only it's only it's only god who who could have done that and it's like the old saying can a leopard change his spots in the leopard's own strength the leopard is unable to do so can you change your own ways whether you're struggling with habits or struggling with things from the past or hurt or unforgiveness can you change it because it seems so permanent and i'm reminded of the story of the woman with the blood with the issue of the blood who for 12 years suffered from this ailment of the blood and coming to jesus touched the hem of his garment and immediately the flow of blood stopped and i just want to encourage you that during this time as you remember as you think about the goodness of god it might be a reality today that there are still things that we're struggling with and still things that we haven't overcome yet and that you haven't seen victory over yet but i want to encourage you that god is faithful and god is still able sometimes even as believers having walked with god for a while you think like ah oh, yeah i know god can do it for other people but 
Can he really do it for me? Can he really do it in my family? Can my whole family actually come to salvation? Can I actually be set free from this habitual sin? Can this heaviness or this hurt that I've been carrying all this time be taken away from me? I can testify that, yes, it can. Amen. Because the tomb is empty and Jesus has overcome death and he's overcome sin and its consequences. So that is my testimony. Since then, since the time of following the Lord and accepting him and going to church and being equipped, um, I've grown so, so much. And the awesome thing is that it's not a done deal. It's not like I'm done following Jesus. It's a continual process. And the closer that I get to him, the more I realize that I actually don't know anything. Um, but that is such a massive privilege because God is so, so much bigger than anything we can ever think or imagine. Bless you and have an amazing night further. Hi family, welcome to the food station where we are preparing food for families in Kaimandi, international students and the homeless. At Club Match, we just want to show you guys what's happening. Whoa.